It's your boy Ali Butter Dunn, Hip Hop at Lunch again. It's my family all day, every day. Hip Hop at Lunch, Duct Tape Nation. That's Mike Boyd, Hip Hop at Lunch here with Ali Boyd. How's it going, man? Man, it's just cool, man, all day, every day. Hip Hop at Lunch. Definitely. Here at the listening party for Definite Shit Fuck Shit, too, man. Working, man. You know, we were just on this. We were just up in last week, man. So this thing done dropped. You know, the pressure off. It wasn't really no pressure, man. But I'm just glad to see the work paying off, and it, you know, getting recognized like I wanted it to. Yeah, man. So I wanted to get your mindset behind a few of the standout tracks on the project. Mm -hmm. I wanted to start with a uh, "Bring the Pain," kind of like a little bit of a Tupac tribute with you on that oh, hook. Yeah, it's and... a it's a real Tupac tribute, you know. But I ain't want to jack now on any beats, you know what I'm saying? Cause I don't jack. Two pop beats. I got that much respect for him as an artist. So on Jack Pop Beats or whatever, but I knew the hook to bring the pain like that was one of the hardest shits to me, you know what right. I'm saying? And I knew it came from Method. I knew Method Man dropped it first, you know what I'm saying? So I just felt like shit, Pop took it from him, I'm gonna goddamn feed off of Pop and just go crazy, you know what I'm saying? I put my nigga Scales on there, my nigga Eastside Jody. We just killed that shit. Lanille Track, Gullah. Yeah, man, your opening line, uh, fuck a ski mask is bare face. Fuck a ski mask <laughs> is bare face. Right, no man. chase, great drop, diamonds in my watch, you say, boy, stop. Oh, definitely, that track goes hard as hell, man. Appreciate it, bro. And then the uh, collaboration with Freddie Gibbs and Big Crit, I want to know like how that come about. This track's crazy, man. Man, my nigga Fred sent me that shit. He was like, bro, I got this track I got from Big Crit. He was on the road. He was like, man, I just got this track from Crit, man. He like, bro, you got to get on it. He like, we going to kill it. So when he sent it to me and I heard it, like, I think that was, like, my, my favorite record on there, like, one of them, like, what, what was fun to me because I really had to write. Like, a lot of shit, I just go hard, you know, but I really had to write because my nigga Fred rap so fast. <laughs> So I'm like, I got to go in on this shit. I'm like, bro, going to fuck crazy. So I really sat down and wrote to it. That was like one of the challenging songs to me, you know what I'm saying? So it, it, was, it was fun to me. So then robbed me, nigga. It, it, that shit crazy. Shouts out to that nigga Freddie Gibbs. Big Crit, man. I appreciate y'all for that shit. Yeah, that track even had kind of a old 3-6 Mafia vibe to it, that man. Shit crazy. Definitely. And then uh, I Ain't Cool. With Zaytoven. I ain't cool. Like that opening skit's hilarious. That dude asking for a free feature, <laughs> man. niggas be walking up <laughs> on you, you know what I'm saying? Nigga walk up on you like you just the coolest nigga in the world. Like they can just say anything to you. So I'm like, bro, I ain't speaking. I ain't shaking y'all niggas' hand. None of that shit. Fuck that. I'm not cool. You know? And at the beginning, I put the skit on there like, hey, Alex. You do features for free, you know, because niggas come to me like that, you know what I'm saying? So I just want to mimic that shit and just kick some shit, kick some flavor on there, put some character to the um, whole mixtape as a whole, you know what I'm saying? So Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of people feeling that track, man. Yeah, they like that. I ain't cool. I knew they would because of the shit I'm saying. Like I said, some controversy, some, some, I'm saying a lot of shit on there, you know? <laughs> and the second verse, I really like got at the girls on that shit. So it's crazy, man. I had fun doing it. Tape, man, this shit, it was, it was fun, man. You know, it was a lot of politics, but it was fun, man. It was fun as hell. Definitely. And then Candy, I wanted to talk about that. Kind of had a Texas feel with the Pimp yeah. C sample on the hook and Trey. Yeah. That like, was like a tribute. What's you know it like working saying? with Trey, man? Trey. I just had to, I don't even want to put it in words. I just take my hat off to Trey. You know what I'm saying? Like, to that real shit. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it at that. Definitely, man. Yeah, I see him fucking with your movement and you fucking with his. I love Trey, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got the record from um my nigga DJ Cannon from his manager, my nigga um, BJ. He gave me the track actually like over a year ago. And I dropped on it. And even before I met my nigga Trey, when I laid the shit down, like, this some Texas feel shit. But I ain't want to just go with the regular shit, like, go get bun or whatever, with, with Pimp on the hook, that, that just seemed too, like, predictable. So I, I, once I met Trey, I'm like, my nigga, I had this record, my nigga, I, had, I never put it out. But I, from before I even met you, I thought about putting you on his record. And he heard it, he killed it, you know what I'm saying? So, shouts out to Houston, man, the whole text. Definitely, that came out perfect, man. Yeah, like, I, 
it just felt like Texas, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then with the definition of fuck shit, one, I did the real tall with Dro. Right. And it had like the same feel, so it only felt right for me to come back with it, man. So it was crazy. And then I'm gonna talk about the last song, When I Die, produced by Grade A Music, man. Like, man. real personal track with you talking to God and everything. Like, what was going through your mind when you wrote it? Like, you know, I'm my biggest critic, you know what I'm saying? And I'm my big, I'm my worst enemy at the same time, you know? And on the record, I'm, I'm saying a lot of shit. Like, I'm talking to God, I'm like, the day that Ellie leave, please throw up a prayer for me. I hope the Lord forgive against the sins when he sent for me. All the dirt I did, I had no choice. I had to make some ends. I had to feed my kids. So it be like, God come to him like, there's no excuse for all the wrong you did. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like a repent song, you know what I'm saying? And like hoping that I can reach my goals even though I do wrong. I'm like, oh, I, I, I want to be a billionaire before I die. You know what I'm saying? Throw up a prayer for a player when I die. You know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to end it out on some on a real note. You know what I'm saying? A lot of messages in this shit, man. You know? Definitely. And then the last part is that quote from the Mac. Like, why'd you choose that quote to end the whole mixtape, man? The quote from the Mac? I, I chose that, man. Kai felt like the, the, the mold that he was in, when, even though he was on some pimp shit, you know what I'm saying? I ain't on no pimp shit, but the feeling he had when he made that statement on that, like how good he felt, like, man, I'ma roll all this shit up when I start winning, I'ma roll it up and just live it up. You know what I'm saying? I felt like, man, that was just perfect for my whole family. You know what I'm saying? Once we get where we wanna be, we just gonna roll this shit up, man, and just just and live, man. You know what I'm saying? Like we ain't been, you know, this ain't living, man, you know, so we just trying to live, man.